Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Hand of Fate 2 Preview Build. In the previous episode we took on the Fool Challenge and came out on top with a new ally in tow. In this episode we'll be taking on the Magician. Now in this case we will be having we will have a companion with us, something completely new to the game. Now before we get into that though, uh, I always recommend looking at the top of the screen, because it'll tell you what you should prepare for. Now, I personally feel this is a good and a bad thing in some ways. It's good because it lets you know, hey, this is what you're going to be dealing with in the challenge. But it's also kind of bad because it causes you to stack your cards with stuff that you know will help you with that, while ignoring new ones because you have no idea what they do. In this case, we're going to be fighting a lot of corrupted, so we're going to want equipment that can help us with that. And we're going to want to avoid encounters that would force us to fight the Empire. Now, as it stands, we only have one companion, and there are only four. But, here's what Malacalypse can do. He has a magic shield, which is his active ability, because these guys do join you in battle. That, when you press the left bumper, not sure what it is on keyboard, because I prefer playing this game with controller, he will create a magic barrier around you that will protect you from one hit. You can also respin the wheel. That is one of the Gambit games we have yet to encounter. What it is is it's essentially a wheel spins round and round and round. You tell it when to stop and you'll either win or lose based on that. However, he can respin it if you have him as your companion. But, but, if you use that ability, he will be out for three turns. That does not mean backtracking over previously explored encounters. They have to be three completely unexplored encounters in order to get him back. Now, he can also use ranged magic. It ignores enemy defense, does a decent amount of damage, but he the is very... The destination is only so long. I would have you prepared before we arrive. Oh, shut up. I'm talking to the viewers. He is very squishy. He cannot take a lot of damage. Now, don't worry, if your companion gets knocked down in battle, he's not gone forever. You can revive him. I'm not sure what happens if you finish the encounter while your companion's down. I imagine they're probably out for the three turns like they would if you use their gambit ability. But who knows. Now we have our encounters. Now, we can only do five because this is an early game. Well, this is very early in the game. But later on, as the games get longer and longer, we'll, able, we'll be able to add more cards. Uh, I think first things first, we should add the Finding Forest Folk, because we didn't get the token for that, and the card that we get from that token is very good. Uh, we should also have Malacalypse's Problems, Fork in the Road, and why not Market Theme. Let's see, yeah, as you can see, any encounters you complete, they will tell you what they uh, do. You can gain gold, gain food, there's dice involved, and a Thieves Ambush. Gain equipment, resources, dice, and combat. Gain gold, dice. But new cards that you have not encountered yet will remain as unknown. Now, I already know that this is a means of gaining food. Because I've played through the preview build. So, I'm going to add it to my deck just so we can unlock it. Uh, let's see. We're going to be fighting a lot of Corrupted. Now, when it comes to Corrupted, there is no specific weapon class that's recommended for them. You can pretty much use anything you want against them and it'll work well. But I know for a fact that Bastion of Purification is good against the Corrupted. It has a special ability against them, so I'll add that. As a matter of fact, I may as well add all of them because it's the only equipment I've got. Now, you may notice that it says Max Platinum Cards and Max Brimstone Cards at the bottom of the description. We have yet to acquire a Platinum or a Brimstone card, but they are very powerful cards. I'm not too sure on Brimstone cards, but I know that's true for Platinum cards. But because they're so powerful, you can only have so many in your hand, or added to your deck. Now, there is one other thing we can do here, but we haven't unlocked it yet. And one other thing, if you're not sure what you want to add, you can just press Y, and it'll build a deck based on off recommendations. So, without further ado, let's get this challenge underway. A casual call to heroism. 
how many adventures start thus? For 100 years, I have thought about nothing but the game. I was defeated, it is true. I became complacent long before then. I thought I knew everything about the game and what it could be. Now you see before you the extent of my research. I have crafted this game anew. Your conversation with a fur trader is interrupted as Malacalypse arrives in a flurry. The whispers speak of trouble at the edge of the Empire. The town of West End is suffering against the Blight. Well, let's find out more about West End. What do you want to know? Let's find out about Empire protection. A small garrison is meant to be protecting the town, but apparently they are all either dead, missing, or drunk. Okay, what makes it special? I have traveled far to escape the oppression of the Empire. West End gave me my freedom, and I intend to return the favor. Where is it? West End sits on the outer edge of the Empire. While the Empire focuses on the capital, its nobles and merchants, those at the fringes, are neglected. Alright, that's enough. Let's head for West End. Now, what, what, what wagon you choose here determines what uh, bonuses you get. If we go with the stone mason, we'll get a bunch of gold. If we go with the food wagon, we'll get a bunch of food. And if we go with the weaponsmith, I'm assuming that we get a free weapon. I've never gone with a weaponsmith. Personally, I'm going to go with the food wagon because food is the most important resource of the game. Food wagon headed to a nearby wedding offers you a ride, and they gift you with some food in exchange for not taking you the whole way. You arrive at the town of West End. To defend the town, you'll need to locate as many Empire soldiers as you can before the Blight invades. Now then, as you may notice, our token is different. That is because we are currently equipped with a heavy weapon, and it's a small touch that I really like. Whenever you equip a different class of weapon, your character's token changes. Now, I'm going to stick with the sword because I know there's an encounter that will be better suited to fighting with a sword and shield. Commerce thrives in even the most unusual of locations. Shopkeeper nods to you as you enter. Adventure! How's the world out there? Now, if we were wounded, we could buy, equip uh, buy some healing. If we had equipment to sell, which we don't because all we have is rusted stuff, we could uh, sell it. Now, we can buy food, which may not be a bad idea, but I know from Malacalypse's card, we need 10 gold. We could buy equipment, but we don't have the cash for it. Ooh, Bastion of Purification. Damaging defenses. Let's see, against corrupted, defend... It's, 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 uh, corrupted, defend causes 30% of your weapon damage to the attackers. Though it is heavy and it reduces movement speed by 10%. Yeah, they've added the weight from armor onto the, uh... Well, onto other bits from the, uh... From this game, or for this game. Which, in all honesty, I never noticed a big difference. I mean, granted, I didn't have the, uh... Granted, it didn't have the weight or the shields, but... When I had heavy armor equipped, I didn't notice a difference in my movement speed. At least, nothing detrimental. Uh, unfortunately, once we leave the general store, we can't go back to it. Before. The Empire reaches too far. The North has gone from a loose collection of tribes to something to truly fear. Right. Now, we could pay to free them, or we could fight and get the same result. Let us see if the mage can help you here. Oh, I believe he can. You know, in his original intro animation, they actually had him playing the lute before his book hit him upside the head. Very funny. Magician, a jester, and a vagabond. When activated, Malacalypse casts a protective spell on you that can block a single hit. Now, they don't show up, but these are the basic northerners. Now, the way you fight them is that when they attack you, you block and strike, but they will continue to attack again. 
So you want a sword and shield for this. If nothing else, I'll get a sword. Like so. Originally it was three different uh, three attacks before they were stopped. Now something else about the northerners is that when you attack them too much, they will attack with an unavoidable attack, which is what the uh, red indicator means. You cannot block those attacks. They will do damage to you. And somehow I managed to hit that guy. Oh, come on. How did that hit me? No matter. It still didn't do any damage thanks to the spell. Cardinal. It indicates the truth of all directions. Cardinal Blade, this is a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna equip that. With the Northerners dead, you free the soldiers. You gain two recruits. Really? Because it looks like there's three in that picture, unless the third one is dead. Which I guess would make sense. Always treat those who feed you with respect. Even I stand by this rule, and I have respect for few. Agreed. You chance upon a, wound, a wooden cart, overflowing with pears, pies, and many items otherwise. A wonderful smell wafts from the cart. Blockalypse shakes his head. Poor old Chester. This is why you should never be seduced by the wiles of women. Coin slave. Coin slave. They'll break your heart and leave you selling your lemon tarts with little business sense. The old farmer hawks his wares to passers-by. Tarts, pies, and exotic fruits. Yeah, sometimes your companions can actually chime in on your, uh, different encounters with comments. And sometimes, they can even help you. Uh, let's see, what would you like to buy on this fine morning? Unfortunately, I don't have much in the way of food, or gold, and I've got enough food for now, so... Sorry, Chester, I'm on my way. Your companion has his own story to tell. We must wonder if this is a tale of a hero or a villain. You arrive at the city markets to meet with Malacalypse's associate. You find him sitting on a blanket by the sewer gates. You can't tell whether he's a goblin, a human, or an animate pile of greasy rags. A few wilted daisies and duckweed tied with rope are flopped on the ground around him. Merc, Malacalypse calls out. To the creature, arms outstretched, I have a favor to ask of you, my handsome friend. Greasy goblin man raises a hand to stop the bard's prattle. Ten gold first, you know that. Blockalypse looks at you expectantly. Give the goblin man ten gold. Blockalypse steps forward as Merc counts the coins. Merc, old bean, the bard learns, looks furtively around before quickly waving at his shoulder. I require help in removing a certain illness. Merc considers Malacalypse for a while. That kind of information costs more than a few coins. You sputter indignantly. I require a test of skill from her. He turns and points at you. Pick a flower and eat it. The greasy florist displays his meager wares. I believe the higher up you go, or the lower down on the list you go, the harder it is. So I'm just going to stick with the daisy. The flower tastes like wilted lettuce with a hint of something like bitter medicine. I'm gonna re-roll all of them. And get an even worse score. You feel an intense wave of heat emanate from your stomach to your neck and you collapse to the floor. You wake to Malacalypse, splashing you with water. Merc is left and you see him attempting to steal a seed bun from the baker's stall. We'll come back later and try again. Yeah, of course we are. Here we begin to see one of the small ways I've changed the game. Each challenge differs both in their rules and their objectives. Even those cards which were once the stairs now vary per challenge, as you will see. He's right. Originally, when you found the stairs, you would just move on to the next floor. But not here. Here, you'll face a challenge, which more often than not will be a fight. The West End Tower bell chimes feverishly. The town crier bellows. 
There's corrupted inside the town. They broke through the sewers and into Loose Lane. Our brave soldiers have gone down there to sort it out. See, you arrive at uh, have arrived to find West End's few remaining soldiers huddled at the entrance to its poorest area, Loose Lane. We cannot let the corruption spread. For the good of the town, we must dispose of anyone who has been tainted, even a little. You join the fight against the corrupted. Now, if these guys survive, they'll join our fight. If they survive. But at least we get to test out our new Cardinal Blade. Inflicted. The first touches of corruption bring forth the darkest elements of their victims. Infected enemies are feeble, causing them to be knocked down when health is low. Use a finisher before they recover. Yeah, here's the thing about in about the Corrupted. When you strike them down, they will not die right away unless you do enough damage to overwhelm them and kill them immediately. But more often than not, they'll just go down and then recover. You gotta use a finisher to take them out, uh, to, to, to finish them off. Now, we didn't get to see the animation of the sword coming down for us. That's typically what tends to happen. And that's one corrupted down. Oh, I am loving these, uh, animations. Originally, it was just like you either stab them up, and then just let them go, or stab them in the back. But they've definitely changed it up. I think there's actually an animation where you stab them in the face and then knock them off your sword with your shield. And that's just for swords and shields. With the corrupted threat removed, you've ensured that these soldiers survive to aid the town's defense. The soldiers help you scavenge what you can from the remains of the poor souls taken by the corruption. What equipment from two? Uh, I'm gonna take the Bastion of Purification just because, you know, that extra damage against Corrupted will be nice. Plus, the extra defense will also help. In more ways than one. Free food's always nice. Now, that card actually becomes a special one we can use later on. They got themselves into this mess. I don't see why you should get them out. Because I need their help? I mean, technically I don't, but having the cannon fodder would be nice. Ah, now we see this. Raider. From the northern... <clears throat> from the frozen darkness of the no far north, they come. Northerners can perform a combo attacks. Use a repost with single-handed weapons to deal extra damage immediately after you defend. Come on, is this all you guys have? I thought you were Northerners, not Empire Soldiers. Now, the Cardinal Blade is good to use when you're in a crowd. Well, its special ability is good to use when you're in a crowd. I mean, neither of these things really help me. I believe that was the last time we're going to face Northerners in this challenge, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not going to equip it's this. It's a thing you put in front of you so people don't hit you. I'm sure you can work it out. Really? I didn't know that's how shields were. Yeah, the dealer can be a bit of an ass sometimes, but I still enjoy his company. They place themselves in these dire positions and then expect a hero to come rescue them when things become too much. While patrolling the outskirts of West End, you hear the clash of steel and the unmistakable groan of corrupted. Your investigation leads you to a distressed nobleman perched on the roof of his carriage. 
thank the gods. I was heading to tea with, Duke, with the Duke Gilbert when we were ambushed. My footman left me here to fight them off, but the brawl has now dispersed into the forest. Noble Pierce fears fully at the tree line. If you stay here and protect me, I can pay you. In all honesty, I don't really need the gold for the rest of this challenge. I'd much rather go after the soldiers and have some more guys helping me. Now, I do have to make sure these guys survive or I get nothing out of this. You rush to the forest and quickly encounter a squad of Empire soldiers battling the corrupted. I seem to recall a squad being more than two people. But whatever, I guess squad has a different definition in this world. Now, it doesn't matter if we win or lose this fight, if they don't survive, we get no recruits whatsoever. Ah, here it is. No. Cardinal Blade, prepared for violence in every major direction. I gotta keep these guys off the soldiers. If that means keeping their attention on me, so be it. No, you don't. No, stay away from them. Ooh, that's the one I was thinking of. Unfortunately, your companions cannot perform finishers, so that's up to you. But thankfully, we managed to get through this with all the soldiers surviving. Ooh, Thu... Thu... Nair's Boon. Draw a game card at the beginning of each new map. If it is a gold card, then keep it, otherwise discard it. Well, that would be helpful if we weren't already on the last floor. Well, let's see. I'm sure we could have handled it, but thanks for stepping in. I guess we have to go back to escorting His Highness, Sir Quivering Blanket of Mumsy, off to his palace. Appeal to their sense of duty to defend West End? Oh, we are... well, we do have more dice on this. 17. Just need to get one more point. Please, 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 please. Damn it. Your words fall on deaf ears, and the soldiers trudge back to their duty, carrying the noble to his estate. In my day, thieves kept their distance. None would pickpocket a mage for fear of failure, or worse, success. Now, I've never actually beaten this encounter. Market Bazaar is a hive of activity. Traders from across the lands call out to passers-by to sell their wares. As the sun beats down on the crowded street, you pause briefly to draw from a water, uh, draw water from a fountain. You feel something tug on the inside of your tunic. Turning quickly, you discover a pickpocket making off with some of your belongings. You jump to your feet and catch a glimpse of the thief as they weave through the crowd. Oh boy. I don't know, this one? Of course. The tangled maze of people proves too much for you and the thief makes their escape. Let's see, let's go back around this way, because I believe the upper right corner is the... In one your way. life, you will have wandered endless intersections, yet this one sticks with you. Why? What is it in your memory that catches here? I couldn't tell you, man. Anyways, like I was saying, I'm pretty sure the upper right-hand corner is where the final encounter is. You arrive at a signpost detailing the possible path east and west. Or in my case, just east. Now, let's see if we can pass this one again. Yes. You follow the song through the thicket and stream until you find an open glade bathed in golden light. You find an aged maiden, her posture bent like the boughs of a forest. 
It's been twelve winters since I had a visitor. Her voice is a whisper, yet it thunders in your ears. You may visit me when you are in need, adventurer. This is yours now. Even if you lose the challenge, you have earned this token. And a general store. Unfortunately, I don't have much I could buy. I could sell off that shield. But it wouldn't let me buy much with it. Ooh, battered helm, that's new. Helm, only one helm can be equipped at a time. So, nothing special about it. Then again, the extra bit of defense would be nice. Well, that may help you on the road ahead. Yeah, that's why I bought it. Funny that our adventure's hood is no longer available, but whatever. Now your chance presents itself. At last, stand in the defense of the peasantry. What noble traits you display already. Thank you. Top West End Tower Hall. Uh, West End Town Hall is a large bell tower. It used to signal the day's end for the workers in the mines and surrounding fields. But now we will summon West End's defenders. Do you wish to summon the soldiers you have recruited? Well, there are no other cards for me to complete, so yeah, I'll ring the bell. As night cloaks West End, you can sense the corruption rising from the shadows all around you. You survey any soldiers you've managed to recruit. You've gathered a large group of soldiers to defend the town. Here's hoping you won't need any more. Let's give a rousing speech. Now, Nothing. you wager for more than mere success and failure. You choose the very stakes themselves. Nothing bad happens if you fail, so it's worth a try. Bingo! Your rousing speech imbues the soldiers with confidence and zeal. Allied Empire deal more damage. Nice. I think that's the first time I've ever gotten that. West End. As the final vestiges of humanity are erased, the terror wakes. Use Bash to break the terror's corrupted armor and defeat it with a finisher before it regenerates. Yeah, none of your normal attacks will do anything to this guy. You gotta use your shield Bash to break him apart. Then he'll try to attack you once his armor is broken and you use a finisher. But on this guy, it won't kill him right away. Oh, don't be such a coward, Malocalypse. Now, I may as well take care of these guys, because I have to kill them anyways. And it would be good to thin them out so that I can focus on the big guy. Now, unfortunately, the ability I have won't do any good against him, because, well, he's covered in armor, and my allies would do no good either. Oh, come on. Or at least I have my shield. Better get it back in case that happens again. Or I just get way too greedy. And with that, the terror of West End is gone. The town lives on. A mighty creature of chaos felled by your power. Does it satisfy you, this bloodshed? Knowing those you destroy were once simple peasants going about their day. It doesn't satisfy me to have to kill them, but knowing that most likely they are suffering beneath the corrup corruption, I like to think that I'm putting them out of their misery. At least, that's what I hope. Once the corrupted behemoth falls, the rest of the minions flee, their spirits broken. Soldiers erupt in cheers, praising your valor. You can rest until morning, 
ready to greet the reinforcements with a town already saved. The magician returns to the deck, but now we only begin our stories of fate, folly, and magic. Do not think I'm satisfied with this, but at least we have a place to begin. Ooh, Winter's Bane, that's a nice fancy looking blade. Now, Valiant Aegis, I'm assuming that's a shield, and Ruby Ring. I can never remember what that does because I don't think I've ever gotten it. Let's see, Man-Eating Tree, Gnomish Exchange, Lost Boy, Pauper Plague. Now that's the card I was talking about that would become a regular one. The West End Tavern. For finding the forest folk, we get the Old Maiden, which is sort of a sequel, I guess, to the original Maiden, or Elven Maiden, who, when you found her, would give you life, food, or money. Money, well, life, food, money, and later on, a blessing. Not sure if she still does the blessing, but I know she still does food, money, and health. As you play, you will find more options open to you. Should you find yourself blocked or overly challenged, take the time to explore the board. Unlocking cards will give you options you have not yet considered. Yeah, in other words, you can play these out of order. You know, if you find one challenge is way too difficult, then move on to another. But it kind of doesn't make sense story-wise to do so. But, anyways, I'm getting off topic. We have come to the end of the second challenge, saving the town of West End from the corrupted. But yet more challenges open up before us. Will we pass them? Who's to say? If you guys like what you see, please leave a like, subscribe for future content, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Thanks for watching.